You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. No one likes to think about death or what will happen before or after death. However, as much as you dislike the thought of it, you probably also don't want to leave your family to hours and days of time spent running around figuring out what assets have you left behind, how to ensure passing on those to the family and deciding who will receive what. This is where estate planning comes in. By creating an estate plan, you clearly lay out how you want your belongings and assets to be given to your loved ones when you're no longer around. In today's episode, Sneha Makhija, head of wealth planning at Sanctum Wealth, has joined me to share how one should go about creating an estate plan. Hi, I'm Shipra from Mint's personal finance team and welcome back to Why Not Mint Money. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. Hi Sneha, welcome to Why Not Mint Money. Hi Shipra, thank you for having me on the show. So before we go into you know how should one uh, go about estate plan- planning, I want to hear your views on why is estate planning important. Right. You know, most of the times you would have heard people talk about creating wealth, about their financial plans. I mean, you know, most of our life is actually spent on actually how should we create money, how we should manage money. And it's very ironical, you know, the money that we have built over the years. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to ensure that that wealth that we have created uh, with all the hard work of our lifetime how is it ultimately going to be um inherited by our loved ones and therefore i think we cannot stress less on the importance of an estate plan because um imagine i think you know the you've given so much of your your blood and sweat to put that wealth together and uh, you do not ironically most individuals do not tend to have a plan to ensure that actually that hard earned wealth is actually inherited in a seamless fashion and therefore an estate plan plays a very very important role right apart from that even in terms of unfortunately people do not uh, are not aware about how do laws play in the country you know what happens when you don't have a plan uh, at all you have interstate succession laws that prevail um by interstate succession laws essentially it means that the government has defined the manner in which an individual's wealth will get passed on on the demise of their individual of course you have community specific laws you have laws for hindus for muslims parsis christians and so on and so forth but i think the bottom line of these interstate succession laws is that there is a predefined manner in which the wealth will get ultimately distributed if you do not create a plan by yourself on the other hand having an estate plan essentially means that you can ensure the wealth gets distributed as per your wishes essentially in terms of you know let me give you an example for a hindu male the law essentially says that if a hindu male does not have an estate plan his wealth will go equally to his mother his wife and children yeah. um you know a lot of clients that i meet they say that's great things are going equal and why should then we really have a plan in place well great you know in our perception equal is considered fair but it may not be a very efficient way of an individual passing on wealth because as in the example i just mentioned about the hindu male and you know his assets being inherited by all his family members equally yeah the mother may essentially say that um, you know uh, i have the, i have inherited this real estate property from my son it has sentimental value i do not want to sell it now the wife is also a co-owner of the property because she has in her co-inherited with the mother in law she in fact may perhaps say that uh, sorry i need to create financial liquidity for my children's education and therefore i need to sell the property now you will realize that not having a plan and leaving things to chance or for that matter the interstate succession laws has created a complicated ownership pattern of the assets 
suddenly that acid that was held by one individual is suddenly held by multiple individuals maybe having divergent views on how they want to deal with the acid and ultimately leading to you know the typical family disputes conflicts and actually no one enjoying that well absolutely more so i think you know um the regulatory framework also is so very complicated uh and people tend not to give heed to it um you want to actually ensure that wealth is inherited in a very smooth fashion by your loved ones and when you do not have an estate plan you probably have not streamlined the paperwork the planning around it and therefore it can lead to a lot of administrative and legal hurdles as well by the family members so therefore again it has a very important role to ensure that it's a very seamless fashion in which the wealth gets inherited more so i think you know simple things like an estate plan is not just about doing the paperwork or you know put doing doing a pen to paper exercise it has a lot more to do with how you are weaving in the practical elements to ensure a smoother succession for right. instance you know in terms of um, having no nominations you know the financial institution will say to the uh, to the legal heir go get me a succession certificate or a probate or a letter letter of administration as the case may be now all this will will result in a time lag between the wealth that can get inherited by the inheritor because he needs to complete the legal formalities which could be anywhere between 3 months to 6 to even 1 year at times that's right on the other hand if i would have a plan in place which would involve interweaving practical elements looking at how i'm owning my assets how are the nominations done and putting all things in place during my lifetime it would just be maybe you know the nominee approaching the financial institution submitting the death certificate and whatever kyc certain paperwork and they have complete immediate access to it on the other hand having a no plan at all can even lead to freezing of the estate till maybe such time all the formalities are completed and the family members may not have access to the funds so it could become a very very difficult situations for families that's right totally agree with you so sneha when do you think is the right time to start putting together a estate plan um i think the moment you have an S- you you have an asset and you have an intention that you want to pass it on to a particular individual you should have a plan immediately in place a lot of times people think okay you know what estate plan means when i should be a little older i should be 60 years 70 years maybe that time i'll have a better visibility about how i want my wealth to get passed on okay. um i think estate plan does not have any age you don't need to have a specific age to start planning for it uh if you have an asset and you want to pass it on to a, a certain individual you should have a plan immediately in place uh, because you know we are planning for an event we are unaware of as to when it's going to come into play right we don't know a last date and therefore uh, the idea is the moment you are having an intention you should have one immediately put in place and i think the beauty of an estate plan especially if i can talk about a will a will is something you know you can change it tomorrow if your mind changes so it's not something that you're carving in stone and you can't undo it tomorrow so long as during your lifetime you can keep changing your will umpteen number of times and that i think gives you so much great flexibility that you don't need to wait for a certain milestone in your life to start planning for events like these that's right that's right like you said that people tend to uh, delay estate till the time you know they get a little older do you think there are some other reasons also that people don't start estate planning you know soon after they start acquiring assets or you know early on in their careers yeah actually there are a host of reasons why people kind of delay it i think one of course as i highlighted is you know uh the very fact when you're talking about an estate plan you're talking about a situation or an event when you're no longer going to be around and it's a very morbid topic by itself and it's even considered a taboo in in you know uh, culturally speaking as well to talk about that um so people tend to kind of put it away you know they they tend to kind of delay the whole discussion because they don't want to talk of an uncomfortable situation wherein they will not be around 
with your family members and more so to talk about this topic with your loved ones again becomes a very difficult situation for a lot of individuals uh for for them to perceive that you know a family member will no longer be there and how should their wealth get passed on so of course one is of course it's a difficult kind of a situation to kind of deal with immediately also in terms of you know taking estate planning also involves taking difficult decisions you know we tend to always be in our comfort zone and if things are all going well you really don't want to kind of poach or open up on topics that may probably have certain sort of a difference of opinion amongst family members uh a lot of times people will say things are going fine in my family everything is hunky dory why should i bring up topics or subjects that may perhaps create any animosity or conflicts among the family members uh i think uh, that's again a bias uh because not necessarily every discussion like this can lead to a family conflict that can be destructive in fact a lot of times when you have open discussions like this amongst your family members it can lead to in fact very constructive and healthy feedback amongst the family members where family members get an opportunity to voice their thoughts and opinions and therefore the likelihood of the wealth staying amongst the family members kind of the chances increases a whole lot uh, uh, at a great to a greater extent also you know as i mentioned to you about certain preconceived notions people have preconceived notions that okay um the estate plan is required for super rich families it's meant for people with a lot of wealth or it's meant for complicated families or people who are having complicated assets so too many assets spread across the globe and therefore it's just not something that's meant for me but you know like i highlighted to you earlier it's just meant for anyone and everyone provided you have an asset and you have an intention to pass it on to a particular individual so you know just to and uh, just to kind of sum it up in terms of you know a of course no one wants to go through any difficult decision making process as well uh because kind of you're going to trying to understand in terms of when you're putting your plan together you have to do a good amount of scenario planning what if situations what if my spouse gets remarried what if my um my child is no longer there or passes away before before me then how should the wealth get passed on uh should i pass on wealth to a child who's a spendthrift or is prone to wrong wrong habits now when you're putting your estate plan together there are a host of difficult decisions also that you may have to make and therefore what's the best way out of the situation is to procrastinate um so you know all these factors that i mentioned to you talking about that taking difficult decisions perhaps having some um biases um all these contribute to actually people trying to put away you know their estate plan to kind of do it at a later date apart from that there are there are a number of other reasons as well you know if i just want to highlight a few more um i think it's even a daunting task you know imagine you have spent years building wealth you have different assets uh imagine you have to go through all that paperwork streamline things it yeah. can be a very daunting task because um and therefore you know when anything is very overwhelming it's just a behavioral instinct to kind of put it away right so so now coming to the main question of you know what are the different ways to carry out this exercise so maybe one by one you know if you could tell us all the options right right i think to begin with you know the fu- the fundamental thing of uh, of how do you carry out this exercise is to understand the objective you need to understand the objective of the individual for whom this plan is getting devised because that is going to determine the tools and solutions that will have to be utilized to ensure the plan is a success um therefore understanding the objective whether the objective of the individual is okay singlet succession of wealth i want to ensure insulate my wealth maybe my child is 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 not very investment savvy or he perhaps may not be in a position to manage wealth prudently or he is way too young so you know all these sort of objectives have a role to play to understand what kind of a solution or tool is required 
apart from other factors like understanding the family background um you know the citizenship status uh the extent of assets that are held are they held all locally or do you have assets spread across the globe because you have then cross border laws also that will have a role to play and of course you also have to look into the emotional and the sensitive aspects of the family understanding the family dynamics uh, of the different relationships that exist because all of them will have to be given equal, equal weightage to understand what kind of a role or solution will ultimately evolve for them that will be a success for the family so this what i just mentioned to you is the foundation of an estate plan understanding the client their objectives uh, their family tree their structure who are the inheritors where are they located citizenship what are the extent of assets all of this needs to be understood at a step 1 once we have this basic foundation in place that's when i said it's going to lead to the tools that exist you know whether it is having a will you know so basically maybe family members who have assets each of those family members should have a will in place apart from that there are different tools like should there be any asset transfer that takes place during the lifetime of an individual and therefore one could evaluate if any gifting can be undertaken amongst the individuals again going back to the foundational uh, element of understanding the objective if the objective is you want to insulate wealth you want to ring fence wealth or perhaps you are exposed to any sort of taxes or inheritance taxes in any other jurisdiction will a trust be a prudent mechanism to have right. then it's about going about an understanding which solution will work for the family and putting it all together right uh, so yeah can you tell us a little more about family trusts what exactly are family trusts and how do these work yeah sure so essentially a family trust in simple words if i may explain it's more like you're creating a pool structure uh wherein you are putting in all your wealth or assets and whatever wealth and assets that you put into a structure like this can be utilized for the benefit of the family members essentially being the beneficiaries of the trust so essentially you will have a person creating the trust popularly known as a settlor or an author of a trust now that individual for instance may have 20 crores on his balance sheet he decides that okay out of the 20 crores i'm going to pick up say 10 crores and put it into a trust structure which will be utilized for the benefit of my family who are beneficiaries of the trust for instance being his spouse and children now this trust structure essentially is something wherein you know just the way um it's basically a pool account that is managed wherein the wealth gets managed for the family and whatever wealth is held in the pool account can be utilized for the benefit of the beneficiaries be it for their day to day living expenses lifestyle requirements marriage medical requirements education so on and so forth right and when do you think that a struck a trust establishing a trust is more uh, useful over creating a will right um i think you know uh, let me probably stick to around how is a will different from a trust because i think that perhaps may give a perspective as to when a trust may be a necessity right uh essentially a will is a one time distribution of wealth right i may have say x amount of wealth and i write it in my will and it goes to individual a now that individual a if if that individual is prudent enough he will manage the wealth well and if he's not prudent enough there are chances of the wealth getting squandered away on the other hand if i have a trust structure i can ensure that is held in a structure which is managed by a board of trustees who kind of will have an overview and oversee as to how this wealth is going to get distributed to the beneficiaries for what requirements and at what stage so i am ensuring that that 10 crores which would have otherwise gone to mr a my a beneficiary in a will i'm trying to give it through a trust structure which could ensure that 
that wealth does not get inherited by Mr. A in one go, wherein there is a possibility of erosion, but it is actually prudently managed in a structure that can, with, with a set of individuals called the board of trustees, who can manage the distribution of this wealth in a very prudent and a timely manner for the benefit of the beneficiary. So one reason why a trust can you know, be imperative is for families who feel that family members are not very financial fa uh, savvy, they're not very prudent, or perhaps for even uh, for that matter for beneficiaries who are minors. I mean, minors are not legally, uh, they cannot legally manage wealth and of course because of the young and tender age as well. And that again leads to the thing of the necessity of having a structure in place that can ensure that the wealth is safeguarded for that individual until such date and time the individual is mature enough to manage that wealth himself or herself. Of course, the, the other additional reasons are that at times you want to also insulate your wealth. Um, at times you can have certain structures in place, of course, provided you have a bona fide intention, wherein you can ensure that you're able to insulate the wealth from any sort of liabilities as well. So ring fencing is also one of the reasons why people form uh, a private family trust. Also in the sense that uh, it can also help in situations where perhaps there are inheritance taxes. In India, as we speak, we do not have inheritance taxes, but just drawing uh, a parallel to countries where it exists like the US and UK, uh, trusts have become a popular structure because it can help families mitigate the impact of such estate duties. So therefore, a trust, you know, it all depends, as I mentioned, about the objective of the individual plays a very important role to, to understand why a trust can become an imperative solution uh, for such an individual. Right. From what I can gather, creating a trust seems like a more tedious task compared to, say, creating a will. Is that right? See, comparatively, yes. Comparatively, yes, uh, a trust is a little bit more cumbersome because, uh, like I mentioned to you, will is something I can keep changing it, you know, every second day. Right. And, you know, you can do it and undo it uh, without any major hassle. Trust is something that you're putting into existence today itself. And therefore, you know, you need to really think through it and have good amount of scenario planning also in built because typically, as I mentioned, you are looking at a very longer time horizon. You're looking at maybe at least, you know, say 20 years or maybe 30 years, again, driven by objectives, of course. But this is a long span of time that you're creating a structure. And if you're creating a structure for a long tenure of time, there is more thought that needs to go into it in terms of what are the likely scenarios that are likely to prevail. And you want to ensure that the trust is not doesn't become uh, redundant at some point in time because it does not have the flexibility to accommodate the different situations or scenarios around you. Right. So from, to that extent, uh, yes, compared to a will, a trust is complicated, but it is not as complicated as it may sound. Um, because especially given, um, you know, when you work with families, you do have that kind of perspective on, on how typically, what are the elements that need to be taken, taken into account? What are the factors that an individual needs to consider when forming these structures, which can then make it a very simple exercise for a lot of families. Right. Uh, and can a trust be made null and void at some point in the future or is it sacrosanct that you know once it has been put in place and it is going to be so it all it, it can be driven by the trust deed um you know okay by null and void of course if there is something that is not sacrosanct legally or there is some law that comes into force there are it could definitely become null and void in that sense uh, and if you're talking about can I undo the structure, then perhaps uh, it was going to be dictated by the trust deed and what kind of a structure also it is. Because, you know, you again have different types of structures in place. Uh, so to undo a structure, like say, for instance, if you have a revocable structure, the revocation rights are with the author during his lifetime. So if he wants or he or she wants to revoke it and undo the trust structure, they can do it at any given point in time. Right. So undoing it is going to be dependent on the structure and on the trust deed and um, 
having it as a null and void structure i think that's something more about if you are if you created a structure which is with a malefied intention uh wherein of course the laws do not support it and legally it is not in sync then of course trust can also be treat, can can be declared as null and void right now coming to the last question of the podcast um if when it comes to implementation of course you know it's a lawyer who will you know help you legally put in place either a will or a trust uh but do you think that for the advisory bit uh, would you recommend people to rely on a lawyer to also advise you on how to go about building either a will or a trust because that is the usual practice from what i have seen around yes yes so it's perfectly fine because i think i i would rather say it is very individual specific rather than profession specific uh, about taking the advice and i think it all depends upon the experience that the individual holds and the exposure that the individual has when it comes to advising on an estate plan and ultimately of course the execution and you know uh, putting all the paperwork in place because the idea is that this experience comes with you know the number of families that you're dealing with and the number of practical solutions that you're able to provide to the family vis-a-vis it being just an academic exercise uh, so to answer your question you know i think it's going to be dependent on the experience of the individual rather than probably it being like a professional specific person advising on the same right okay All right uh thanks a lot for joining us today Seha this has been very very helpful in fact i have learned a lot of things about will and trust and now i am clear you know how i would like to plan my estate so thanks a lot for for this very insightful conversation today thank you so much shipra for having me thank you once again that brings us to the end of today's episode if you would like to know more about this topic or make a suggestion of a personal finance topic that you would like us to cover I can be reached at Twitter under the username of Shipra Singh Sorath and on LinkedIn at Shipra Singh. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next episode. To stay updated on this podcast, follow us at HD Smartcast on all the major social media platforms. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to www.hdsmartcast.com.